to the king of the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. We come to give you the glory. Yeah. Thank you, God. You're worthy, God. Thank you, Lord God, for just letting some of us touch the hem of your blood. Oh, God. But you didn't have to let us. But thank you, oh God, for letting us draw close on today. God, we bless you in this house. Hallelujah. We bow down in your presence on this morning. Have your way, oh God. Hide me, Lord God, and, and keep me focused on the assignment, oh God, that you called me to in this day, in this moment, oh God, for your people, Lord God, that the body of Christ might be edified, oh God, and that you, Lord God, will still and always be glorified. God, I thank you, Lord God, for allowing me. I thank you, Lord God, for choosing me. I thank you, Lord God, for allowing me just to be, Lord God. Hide me, oh God. Yeah, it goes that you would just hear, your people will hear what you want them to hear on to die. Yeah. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I'm excited. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, First Lady. We have some awesome leaders here who have held and carried us in prayer and fasting and doing. I know they held and carried me because I can get a mess real quick in a hurry. So thank you to our elect, Pastor Elect, and Nurse Lady Elect, Peter Ramsey, Minister Rose, hallelujah, my colleagues, Reverend Blanco, as always, good to see you start. Jesus. Hallelujah. Sister Susan, we will continue to pray for you. Hallelujah. In this place. So as First Lady said, I, I am truly on business for the Lord today. Yes. Truly on business for the Lord. I don't know if any other preachers ever had the experience that I had these last few weeks where you get something and, and you look at it and you say, oh, no, God, that's, that's, not, that's not me. I, I don't usually do that. And so, we, you know, you spend a couple hours and, and looking at the word and looking past that word. And, you, you know, like me, I fall asleep a little bit in the closet and wake back up and it's still there. And, and I was like, I'm going to go and try in the morning. And then and, and the next day and the next evening, you still keep coming back, waking up, and it's still there. And you're like, well, Lord, I got to pretty soon. This is, you know, do, do what I told you to do. It's just right there, right? It's right there. And so I usually talk about, you know, getting free. I usually talk about getting out of bondage. The Lord said, you already free. Just stay free. People of God, just stay free. Yes. Stay free. Let's go to Galatians 5 1. That's it. Galatians 5 1. Hallelujah. 5 1. Transition is a hard time. Even if it's transition ordained by God, it's a hard time. And let me tell you, the devil gets busy in transition. Make us forget what we already know. And so we're here today to remind you that transition, this transition that's happened in this house, this transition that's happened in the lives of the body in this house is a good thing. Amen. And we're going to stay free. Amen. We're going to remember what God told us. Amen. Hallelujah. Galatians 5 1 says that it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Amen. Then, stand firm. Then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. I don't usually get tired, but I got one today. Still, just see Jesus. Still, just see Jesus. It reminded me when I had that, that just never rang so loud before. Just, that's it. That's only all you need is just to see Jesus. 
It's sort of like when, when you're telling your children or you're being told by your mom, you know who you are now. You go out, you know who you are. And eventually you just start saying, well, I know, I know, I know. I know who I am. I know you told me already. You know, pastor comes up day, Sunday after Sunday. Just see Jesus. I know pastor. I know you. Yeah, we just going to see Jesus. Yes. Well, you know what? Just see Jesus. I had my just see Jesus moment. So we're going to talk about what it means to still just see Jesus and stay free. So let me give you a little background here and um, tell you what the Lord gave to me. And so here we are with, uh, with Paul. I just got to love Paul. He just don't mince his words at all. Galatians, the whole Galatians is a, is a book. It's a hard read in some places because Paul is going in and some folks have forgot some things. And so the church at Galatia was one of the very first churches Paul established in his ministry. So you can imagine how special the connection he felt to the body of Christ located at Galatia and his hope for their well-being as he continued on about what the Lord had called him to do. I can imagine how uh, uh, a pastor has a special connection and first lady to the body of this of this in this vineyard. And, and as God has called him to travel on to do what he's doing, that his hope is, hallelujah, that we will remain connected to the body, to Christ. Amen. In some manner, it came to his attention, Paul, that this particular flock was going astray a bit in some way. I don't know how he found out. I, I, you know, I could have missed that because I was trying to get away from this word, but I don't know how he found out. But he found out. And, and I don't know how Pastor and First Lady found out. You know, she's always on social media checking things out and, you know, giving a love not like there. And I'm not sure how he found out. So this letter was written, sounded more like first lady than pastor, but this letter was written, very common for Paul to write letters, as we all are aware, but this letter was a little different. This letter was a hard read. By line six in Galatians chapter one, Paul was clear that something wasn't right. He said, I'm astonished that you're so quickly deserted the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as you go back and read the whole letter, and I'm sure you will, you will see Paul is intentional about establishing his authority and his credentials. Because okay. he's an expert witness in this moment. Okay. The first thing you do when you're about to tell some people some things that they might not want to hear but need to hear is that you establish your credentials and you establish an understanding that I am for God. God sent me. God ordained me. God called me. And I am speaking the word of God. And so Paul is speaking with authority because he was sent by God. He's telling the church, the church of Galatia that he lives by the faith in the Son of God who gave himself for him. That is not by the law that saves, but by the work of Christ on the cross. And that's the whole letter. The whole letter. He does get a little bit harsh in there. That's why I start to sound a little bit like first lady. Because he said, some of you folks need to castrate yourself because you done stepped out of line. I mean, there's some, he's calling some folks idiots on the slide in the letter and saying, what is wrong with you? I'm not even going to look over there. She does. <laughs> Paul is singularly focused because lives are at stake. He doesn't mince his words. He is clear. He is concise. And sometimes, like I said, harsh in his delivery. But Paul doesn't have time to worry about offending anybody. Okay. I think as Christians, sometimes we're too sensitive. And that's why we can't properly evangelize because we're afraid of rejection and correction. But Paul is saying, I'm here to make some corrections, sensitive Christians. 
See, Paul is standing in authority. And we can do that when we spend time with God. When we spend time in the Word with God. When we spend time in prayer. When we witness about how God has turned us around and reopened our eyes. When we don't mind making sacrifices and hard choices for the kingdom of God. We, like Paul, will speak with authority about who we are in Christ. And what Christ has done. And Christ alone is just Jesus. We are saved by the grace of God who made himself a curse, taking our sin upon himself that we might live just see Jesus. Now, I, I know that you've heard this uh, from Paul because I know they heard this, their church, I, I know they heard this before. I know we've heard this before. I'm not saying they knew. But what I've discovered in reading Paul, that it's okay to keep hearing the truth over and over again. Because this atmosphere, the airways get cluttered real quick with distractions. And the enemy is speaking real loud. And he's taking every opportunity to say what he's going to say over and over again. It's interesting, interesting how the enemy has some kind of make-believe resurrection power. It just keeps getting up and, and coming up. But he's not the resurrected one. He just has the appearance of someone who can keep getting up. And, and that thing just keeps getting up. And so we need to keep hearing the truth over and over again because uh, the enemy is taking every opportunity, especially in transition, to get a foothold. So honestly, I believe that every time in, in, in reading Paul, that, that we go to the Word, even if we say, I, I, I know that passage. I mean, I, I've heard that before. But every time we go to the Word of God, this here comes the arrogance of our Christianity. We come right now, oh, I know that scripture. I got that scripture memorized. The Lord is my shepherd, I should not want. I got that scripture memorized. But we have to come to the word of God every time with humility and approach his word with expectation because there's a blessing that waits every time we read the word of God with reverence and expectation. That's what I got. Hallelujah. So I, 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 I love Paul here. I love what he's saying. He's, he prayerfully, as I prayerfully continued to read, I began to see Paul. And I was like, whoa, whoa, Paul. You know, angry. But I began to see something different as I reread it and reread it because, you know, I was trying to go somewhere else. I said, I kept rereading and rereading it. And it began to, I began to hear not an angry Paul, but I began to hear the heart of a parent. I began to hear the heart of a guardian and a protector with fierce, loving concern, ready to do whatever it takes to get the people back on track. And then I thought, what if each of us in this body? live with such intention yes. of stepping in unafraid, yes. putting ourselves between the enemy and the people of God, in prayer and fasting and speaking the word, just standing between the enemy and God. If we had the courage not to mind our own business, how many saints would we pull back from the hand of the enemy? So Paul is talking to the believers if you haven't figured it out yet. He's talking to the believers. Put yourself in between the enemy and God's people, those who have the strength, yes. those who are prayed up. Get between the enemy and God's people yes, and snatch some people back from bondage. Glory. Hallelujah. Paul's beloved, beloved Galatia. Pastor's beloved hope. Entertaining the notion that Jesus Christ is no longer enough. Come on here. And they need some aspect of the law mm -hmm. to make sure all the bases of salvation are covered. Right. Make sure they are covered in, in every way. They, they need some mosaic law. They, they need some acts of circumcision. <laughs> they got to do something. Come on. You know, we are people that like to do stuff. Right. We don't feel right unless we're doing something. We got to put our hand in. We, we got to be out doing something. We just can't wait. 
Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. We, we got to do something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So who are these instigators that have showed up at the church of Galatia? <laughs> Let's go. These Judaizers. Y'all done heard about the Judaizers. If you haven't, you're going to hear about them today. Because <laughs> they're, they're lurking around. They probably right. You probably done ran into some this morning. You sure going to run into some this week. I'm going to show you who they are. The Judaizers, see, they showed up in Acts 15. Imagine that. Right after the church got a supernatural visitation and anointing, they showed up. When people were were feeling or were high from the Lord's visitation and, and had the word and were holding to the word, they showed up yeah. causing trouble. Yeah. Now here they are again in Galatia. After Paul has journeyed on uh, where God has called him into. And so soon after this explosion, here come the Judaizers undermining the preaching and the teaching of Paul. Undermining the preaching and teaching of the reverend pastor. Hallelujah. Our reverend pastor undermining and undermining the preaching and the teaching. And, and so those who do not know the word targeting the weak in spirit. Targeting folks in transition who may be hurting, who may be confused, who may haven't heard the vision or seen the vision or caught the vision or prayed enough about hearing or seeing or catching the vision. Those who are maybe angry and those who are hurting and those who are just uh, uh, clinging, but clinging to the wrong thing. And, 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 and so the Judaizers come in and they, they say, oh, oh, you need something else. You need to do something else. You need to believe something else. So, but Paul fought hard back in Acts 15. He, I mean, he pulled together a whole council. This nonsense. Preaching another gospel. Being circumcised so you can be saved. Paul's like, uh uh. The Judaizers were Jewish Christians. How about that? Jewish Christians, they called themselves. Some were Jewish, some were non-Jewish, and they, how they ever they got to call themselves Christians, I'm not quite sure, because Christian means just see Jesus, but they, they uh, wrap themselves up in a, a, a cloak of, a, of, a, of delusion, or, or what's the word I'm looking for? They, of, uh, hallelujah, they wrap themselves up is something and began to fool the people but but he, he says I'm glad church that you have Jesus come on and that's what they were saying I'm glad you have Jesus but you might need to add some type of works to really secure your salvation All right. I'm glad you have Jesus see the Jews doesn't come to, this, to, to put out our Jesus. The Judaizer comes to add on. The Judaizer comes right alongside of you. Yeah, let me, let me pray with you. And, 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 and maybe we can do this over here. And, and we're going to get to some of those, those things. But just slides up next to you. I love your Jesus too. But this might work well too. So the Judaizers was in the camp spying out the freedom of the Christian body. Was there for a minute looking at the Christian freedoms. Because you know they gotta be able to speak the language, they gotta be able to move. And the devil can't have us being free. The devil can't have you realizing how free you are. So love we have for God, for whom we have not seen. But holding faith and believing faith and moving faith and standing faith is hard in transition sometimes. Come on. Come and the Judaizers have not gone away. All right. They are outside the church. Mm -hmm. They are inside the church. 
We need to undermine all that God has spoken into this body. All of the foundation of which this body was built on, they are waiting to tell you about things that you need along with Christ Jesus in order to live a life well. But see, if they can get us to add or subtract anything from the gospel of Christ, what Paul say, we ain't got no gospel at all. We ain't have no gospel at all. And if we begin to believe that we can add some things on to this Christian journey, that we can add some things on besides just seeing Jesus, uh, then all we're going to have left is that stuff. Come on. Those rituals, mm -hmm. those objects, those acts. Because once you decide that you need Jesus and we serve a jealous God, Come on here. you're going to have that. And when you that is just Jesus. Yes. Jesus will be right where we left him. So freedom in Christ. Because freedom in Christ is what enables the body of Christ yes. to yes. grow. Yes. And that's what the enemy knows. It is that freedom that we develop that fruit that Paul talks about later in this chapter. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And we get this freedom mixed up. We, we say freedom often, we come to think of mind that, oh, I can live and do as I please. Not necessarily in a bad way, but just me and mine and being focused on me and mine. I'm going to church, I'm praying, I'm tired, I'm focused on me and mine. I'm doing, you know, I'm doing things rotely and ritually. But it is Christ that has set us free. So I'm convinced that is more than the rituals that we do and perform. We can't turn tithing and showing up in church into a ritual. To something that we just do. It can never be that. Our freedom means that we are at God's disposal to send us how he chooses to send us. I can't be used by God if I'm chained to rituals and, and empty offerings and, and other things. I can't be used. This freedom is to love. The Bible tells us that love covers a multitude of sin. There ain't no love like our love of Christ on the cross covering a multitude of sins. Our Savior has set us free that we might model that love and our Savior is once and more he's always love and remains love and is love. So much so that he gave his life. So there's no greater freedom than to be able to give and receive love. Love makes us desire the things of God, not rituals. Love makes us desire and do the things that God, that pleases God, and to love one another into obedience and commitment. Yeah. We can love one another into obedience and commitment. We can stand in love and remind others that God is a God that requires obedience and yeah. commitment. And we can do it in a loving way. Yeah. Love says that when I fall down, yeah. I can get up. Because love will not let me stay down trying to figure out a way how to work my way back to grace. Just see Jesus. If you have a hard time showing love and receiving love, I'm going to go out and let here and say that perhaps you're really not convinced how much God really loves you. How much God really loves us. Perhaps we don't believe what God has proclaimed and shown. We're living in a fear that God is going to leave us once God has discovered who we really are. Or we're afraid because of our inability to keep the law perfectly that it will eventually disqualify us from the love of Christ and when we're bracing ourselves. Some of us are so hurt deep down that we can't grasp the reality of a loving God who requires only our heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are all have a calling which has been confirmed by the shed blood of Jesus on the cross, a calling to freedom. 
and remain free. Maintaining our freedom requires vigilance because there is so much at stake. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. During this transition, people of God, watch and pray. Our freedom is for us collectively. I want to go down to stand firm. I was thinking, well, what does that really mean? Stand firm. I mean, really, really stand firm. I must admit, the warriors, we had a, a picture of somebody standing and just tilting over. And I was like, you know, this is the warrior part of me saying, how are you just going to fall over like that? Just be standing and when you you just like fall over. <laughs> but the part of me that has been bruised from falling over said, tap, tap, hey, hey, hey. Transition makes people so vulnerable. Yes. Now when that wind starts to blow, and sometimes it don't have to blow that hard, mm-hmm. you just tipped over. Mm-hmm. Standing firm takes some amazing fortitude because the winds of life they pick up so quickly. Yes. And before you know it, you've fallen over. Oh, yeah. This is tilting over. In the spirit just stayed with me. Because it moved from someone physically tilting over to seeing someone tilting over in the spirit. All right. Well, we gotta be up. Hallelujah. Lord, how can we not tilt over? Because standing firm is not a physical position. It's a spiritual position. Standing firm is a determined position. It's a it's a disciplined position. It's a it's a Jesus and nothing else. Position because I know some people who stand firm on their sick beds. The Lord reminds us that the world, these things of the world, they will absolutely fail. Yes. But we gotta stand firm. When that job is obsolete and our education is outdated and our health and finances are vulnerable, when people in our lives come and go for whatever reason, if we are anchored and standing firm in those things, we will tilt over physically, emotionally, and definitely spiritually. So the word of God, it will never pass away. So anchor ourselves. We've got to anchor ourselves in the word of God. Anchor ourselves in obedience and commitment to Christ in the body. Anchor ourselves in prayer. Anchor ourselves in fellowship. And I'm coming down. And not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. What I, I found interesting in, with the Judaizers is that they didn't mind telling folks, oh, bring your Jesus along. Well, come on, bring your Jesus. Bring your Jesus as we, we pick up this burden of the law and circumcision. Bring your Jesus. Sometimes we find ourselves bringing our Jesus to our yoke. Asking God that Jesus bless me. Bless me while I go over here and play the lottery. <laughs> Bless me while I'm smudging my house with all kind of stuff. Bless me while, while I go over here and see if I'm of the 144 that the Jehovah Witness is talking about. Bless me. I'm just going to take a look at my, my Quran right now. Just bless me, Lord Jesus. You know, I'm just trying to see what, what's going on over here. Come on, Lord. Bless me, Lord God. I, I'm just going to check it with the horoscopes and the palm reader. I'm, I'm just going to see, Lord God, that they're showing me the same thing that you already showed me, Lord God. I'm just confirming it. Bless me, Lord, while, while, while I get this, this, this prayer towel that this man done spit on 
on and stamped on it. I'm going to get it in, 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 so I can do what I need to do, Lord God. I just bless it. And the, the, the one, oh, God, <laughs> how some Christians, not us, hallelujah, <laughs> when the devil says that uh, you need to come on and get on this lifestyle social justice movement here, because you Christians about love, right? So you, you come on. And bless this social justice movement that's happening right now. We got to stop letting people tell us that we're not Christians because we won't say yes to the dress. Take a look at the Judaizers. Take a look. Take a look. We can't respond to God because we worried about we trying to be Jesus and Jesus plus and Jesus this and Jesus that. And we taking our Jesus to a place and, and we don't even realize we ain't got no Jesus. Jesus like, bye. I'm not going in there with you. I'll be right here when you, you finish reading your Quran and when you finish Spitting on your towel and whatever, I'll be right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. 
Glory. Just see Jesus. Hallelujah. This morning I'm saying, and I keep saying it because perhaps it hasn't settled in your heart like it has settled in mine. And I'm just saying, just. Yes. Just see Jesus. If you haven't offered yourself to the Lord, today is a good day to do so. Yes. Uh, today is a good day to say that I am just going to see Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to try and just see Jesus. I'm going to put down all those other things that have not allowed me to be free, that have not given freedom, that I still am in bondage. And I'm just going to try Jesus. Yeah. I'm just going to see Jesus. Yeah. If you are here or online and, and you have not said, I just want to see Jesus. I want you to write it in the thing that I just want to see Jesus. And someone from the body of this of this house will, will get uh, back to you and, and, and see about you and, and check in on you. Because the doors of the church are always open. Don't let the devil fool you that because you're sitting in your home that you can't just see Jesus and that you can't be saved right where you are. Jesus sees you and knows you. It's about your heart. When Jesus calls us, he doesn't throw all the towels on us. He says, it's about your heart. Amen. Just see him. And perhaps you, you are a Christian already and you are saved and sanctified already and, and the Judaizers have a, uh, has snuck in and began to confuse you. Just say, Jesus, I repent. I repent. And I just see you. Perhaps you're looking for a church home. Well, this church sees Jesus. And will always just see Jesus. So if you're looking for a church home, put it down, looking for a church home. We are in a marvelous transition. Mm -hmm. An ordained by God transition. And you come on to see what this body of Christ is doing to follow our Lord and to lift up Jesus. If you want to be a, a member of this church, just put it in there. Put it in the chat and someone will get back to you. Bless God, bless God, bless God, people of God, and just see Jesus.